Um, good morning, my name is Bledin Rees. I'm a non-executive director of the European Connected Health Alliance and uh, a lawyer by profession. So this morning's uh, talk is uh, labeled From Experimentation to Routine Implementation of M Health Services, uh, Technology and Solutions. Um, what we're really doing in the next session is showcasing the talent around M Health innovation in the city of Barcelona who are the hosts of uh, Mobile World Capital. So very quickly, some introductions to the uh, panel that I'm uh, privileged to be monitoring, uh, or moderating even, uh, this morning. So Rosanna Alasdrandello, who is from the Department of Innovation, Quality, Evaluation, Health, and, and uh, Agency in Catalonia, who will be talking about the Decipher Project and uh, personal health records, and if you like, a public procurement perspective. Um, then. Uh, Julio Lorca, who's from DKV uh, Seguros. So that's a, a private insurer um, purchasing uh, M Health Solutions. And then finally, Ramon uh, Valles, who's um, Social Innovation Director from uh, Barcelona City. So quite an interesting range of uh, perspectives. The idea is to give you at least 10 minutes in which to be able to ask us uh, some questions and to get some interaction between the panel and you, the audience. Um, just to set the scenes, the idea behind this is this is about purchasing um, M Health uh, solutions, technology, and services, and from three very different perspectives. So we're going to hear a bit about pri the private sector and the perspective from an insurer, um, the public sector and, and government public procurement, and then thirdly, the, uh, the third sector or foundations funding um, innovations anywhere in, in the world. So without further ado, I'll pass on to Rosanna. Okay. <clears throat> Thank you very much for inviting me to speak here. And uh, today we are going to talk about, uh, well, who knows me well? Lately I'm always talking about my project, The Cipher, that is somehow one of our sons here in, uh, in the General of Catalonia, in the Department of Health, and more specifically in my agency. So uh, from uh, where I am from? I am from the agency. Agencia de Qualitat y Evaluación Sanitarias de Catalunya. This is an agency that belongs to the Department of Health here in Catalonia, and what we do is uh, um, uh, really strengthen the innovation culture from different uh, perspectives, and making sure, and also um, uh, not only the innovation culture, but also making sure that what we do in healthcare we, we are doing well, uh, because what we are doing is uh, uh, making an assessment of the healthcare services the, uh, the, um, that we deliver here in Catalonia and, uh, and, uh, and observing uh, how we are doing it and uh, um, somehow setting every year a benchmark. And, uh, and also we do, we have a branch that is called the Health Technology Assessment, so when we are set, making an assessment of uh, new procedures, new processes and new technologies. And we are responsible also for the security of the uh, um, data that we generate in the healthcare. Uh, this means that uh, all, uh, when we are talking about, in the previous session, we are talking about electronic health record, the prescription, personal health records, uh, digital images, telecare, all of these data are um, securely you know, uh, controlled by us. Uh, I'm, I'm coming from the area of innovation, and the innovation, what we do is, uh, again, to strengthen the innovation culture here in, uh, in the healthcare system, uh, mainly through different instruments uh, that we are adopting very heavily in the last uh, few years, that are the public procurement of innovation and the pre-commercial procurement. <laughs> and uh, we are doing this, uh, doing this uh, putting in place different projects. Some of them are already promoted internally by, the, by our agency, and some are, or, well, by actors in the healthcare system, and we, uh, prom uh, we support uh, their implementation and their deployment. And some others are uh, supported by the European Commission and are um, funded by the European Commission. Uh, we have uh, different PCP in place, pre-commercial procurement, like the Cypher, but also Thalia, or NIMFA, or Unwell Health. Uh, and we have also different projects that are uh, really focused on how maybe to train, to educate public procurers in these uh, instruments, like Inspire, or uh, try to detect, to understand how to define uh, the basis of a pre-commercial procurement like Proforbip. Um, the Cypher. The Cypher is a, is a European funded project. It's the first uh, PCP in the mobile health 
uh, that we have here in Europe, okay? It is, uh, um, we have different uh, regional procuring entities. We have uh, uh, tics, fun, uh, Fundacion Tic Salut. We have talked about Fundacion Tic Salut just um, one hour ago when Francesca Arsacuglias was presenting uh, the foundation. We have a Trastec from, uh, uh, that is the Central Manchester Foundation Trust from, uh, so from Manchester. And then we have a staff centro from Tuscany. Mm? So we have three regional procuring authorities that they, they come together, led uh, and coordinated by us, uh, to decide how to, to design, how to improve uh, the healthcare delivery through a pre-commercial procurement. And uh, we, are support, we have also supported entities as VTT, as uh, Barcelona Digital, and Anci Innovazione from Italy. Uh, the idea is uh, to start to use the pre-commercial procurement. Why? Because the pre-commercial procurement allows the public procurers to uh, innovate from uh, ready from the very beginning. So it's not a technology push. We are not adopting technology that are, is already in the market. We identify our needs. We identify our needs based on a business case. Later on we will see what a business case is. And once we have identified our needs, we decide that we need to, um, we need to co-create with the technology provider in a competitive process. And these providers will, uh, little by little, uh, re uh, reduce the participation because we will start with the design, and we will go through a prototype, and finally uh, through a proof of concept. And uh, every, in each stage, we will select the best providers in a way that we, at the end of the day, we will have the technology really meets our needs. So it's a co-creation process. Um, the need to be addressed by the three regions is, uh, is uh, well, we have a global issue in all the uh, developed countries, especially in OECD country or also in European country, why not, that we have uh, an inc a strong increase of chronic diseases. And he, this uh, chronic disease has a strong impact in our, whole, uh, in our healthcare services. And uh, also, one of the issue, major issues when we are talking about uh, chronic diseases are the comorbidities. The comorbidity is very, uh, um, is, it makes uh, the treating of the uh, chronic diseases m more complex. Since, again, we are regional um, uh, public uh, procurers, we, have, we see uh, the pre-commercial procurement as an instrument to make a step forward to improve the uh, quality uh, of the healthcare services delivered to our citizens. And, uh, and we want to do this initially targeting m most probably the, uh, the most um, common chronic disease, uh, m m common at least also from uh, uh, um, most complex chronic disease, uh, in, in common uh, taking into account the, uh, the, um, the population affected, that is diabetes type 2. But the solution we want to be in place is to tackle little by little also the rest of the chronic diseases, not just diabetes type 2. Uh, if we calculate the direct cost of, uh, of diabetes type 2 in these three regions, Spain, UK, and Italy, we are talking about something like, um, in total, uh, something like uh, 27, 28, 34 billion in euros per year. Okay? This means also that, uh, and this is also interesting, the highest expenditure, if we analyze how we are uh, spending money for, the, for diabetes type 2, is for no diabetes drugs, because again, comorbidities, and in patients, okay, so uh, hospital admissions or, um, or um, emergency cases, or um, uh, yes, emergency cases. So the idea is that we want to do, what we want to do is uh, uh, support the healthcare services provision from a regional perspective in a way that we can reduce these uh, um, uh, uh, no diabetes drugs and uh, uh, in patients. And this means that this would save to us almost 8 million of euros. This is, is our business case. This is where we start. So how do we do it? We talk with the stakeholders. We, we, who are our stakeholders? Are the physicians? Are, uh, why not, uh, nurses? Are patients? Are industry providers? Are European commissions? We, talk, we look at the directives, data protections, um, medical devices. And why not also we talk, we talk with uh, uh, business angels, and that here is represent, well, very well represented by Raffaello Sanzio, and, uh, and why not also investors, 
<laughs> represented by Quentin Metzis. Okay? That's a key thing. We talk with all of them. And we come up with functional specifications. And uh, the, so what we want is a European Union adapter and data collector. We don't want to reinvent the wheels to, uh, move to, um, to create new mobile apps that support diabetes management. No. We have already in our regions in place personal health records. What we want is to have a, an adapter that connects directly with our personal health records. If you do it in Catalonia, if you do it in Tuscan, if you do it in the UK, most probably you will, do it, you will be able to do it in, in with other health, um, personal health records in other uh, European regions that support us with our objectives. We, do, we are doing it uh, through a competitive process, as I said, and, and uh, we have already done our launch our uh, pre-commercial procurement. Uh, we already had uh, closed our uh, first phase, well, first phase, the phase to, um, uh, to select the suppliers who will come with us to co-create the solution. Uh, we got 16 bits. Behind the 16 bits, we had 22 organizations from seven countries. And, uh, and these are the first nine awarded bidders that will, co will come with us during this path and co-create these solutions. And so from our side, it's also. Thank you. Next slide. <laughs> Can we move the slides on, please? <laughs> Here we are. Here we go. That is my. Oh yeah. No, it's we wheel. switch. Yeah, we'll switch. We switch order. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Fine. Let's do that. Yeah. Bit. Okay. It's yours. <laughs> uh, sorry about that. Okay. Uh, good morning, everyone. Um, I'd like to thank the organization for giving us the opportunity to introduce some of the project uh, we are working on on the TV, uh, the department uh, that I lead. Um, what is happening around us? What is going on? Actually, many people would respond that we are facing an era of change. Although many others, like me, think that we are facing an, a change of era. I hope that... Uh, is that no. As you know, the problem is not people, no. it's a <laughs> techno te <laughs> technological solution. Eh? But my, my meeting uh, go uh, about that, about this uh, problem. Uh, you can see about uh, elderly people waiting. Uh, there we go, there we go. Uh, okay, okay, thank you. Uh, in society in general, and particularly in the public and private healthcare sector, we had all the answer but the question changed. We would all agree with three of the major challenges we are facing. First, the reaching of the retirement age of the generation born after the Second World War, the so-called baby boomers, will endanger the sustainability of the models of uh, health assurance, uh, as we know then uh, today. Second, in a population with a high average life expectancy, new medicine, increasingly personalized and tech, are emerging, but they will be very expensive. Robotic surgery, custom-made drug, viral organs created by 3D printers, and nanobots circulating uh, in the blood, etc. Et Third, citizens nowadays are increasingly informed and demanding, prosumer phenomenon, for example. Luckily for all of us, at the same time, we have powerful tools, tools to carry out a change of paradigm. 
it's been a long time since we knew that 90% of what we spend of health go to medical care. But this only contributes to the reduction of mortality of 11%. If we were able to change the habit of life of the citizens toward a healthy lifestyle, we would get a decrease of 45% of the deaths with a tenth part of the expansion. <coughs> Sorry. But to make this possible, we must provide citizens with resources and tools to make self-care the most important part of the health. Uh, I hope. Uh, ah, no? Uh, okay. Okay. Nowadays, we are in the so-called third wave of digital transformation of the organizations. The first two dealt with uh, processes automation. The third is focusing on generating new business model that will turn into real add value for people our old technology potential we have created to now. However, to make this possible, we must change our way to looking at innovation. To date, we have been abusing a kind of technological despotism. That is, when we have a particular technology, we start developing ideas about of what to do with it. This leads to obtain economic return only for one out of 3,000 ideas. The creation of new business opportunities from new technology should be complemented by a new variable, people's unmet needs or unsolvable problem. It is what we have called innovation led by utility or bottom-up innovation. Okay, at the present time, unfortunately, we have an explosion of technological changes but we are not yet capable of creating business models that generate value from them. Consequently, whenever a new device, app, or platform is created, also it is a new web portal for its management or, or a new tools. Do you really think that a citizen can handle a computer solution for his piece of information that is generated in their life? One for counting steps, another to see if there is someone sleeping at home, another to monitor accident of the elderly. This vision can lead a genuine technological saturation without any practical use. Just in the matter that concerns us in this Congress, as you can see, we have created, uh, sorry, uh, uh, we can estimate close to 50,000 listed under the, 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 the heading of health and well-being solutions, apps. Sorry. In the KV, we are taking this seriously. To deal with it, we have created a model considering the person at the center of uh, an ecosystem around which any universal data related with their health must interoperate. The central core is what we have, we, uh, we have called personal health biography. It is responsible to interpreting and integrating any event in a single data model which synthesizes the set of possible inputs in a single control panel of personal health. L let us take a real example. Any new application of device related to health and well-being can be offered in our marketplace the KV Health and Wimbledon Club, to our two million customer, user and patient. If the owner wants to, it can interoperate with the DKV PHB. The small application we, we, we saw before, as we place an app, establishes the integration of interoperability to our own middleware. From that moment on, any measuring will not only be available in the manufacturer solution, but also in the DKVPHB. 
Data will be integrating with other sources of personal information whenever they come from. This way, the most important will be the plan of action that can, that can be put in place from the integration for all that data, not the data knowledge. Thank you very much. <clears throat> Presentation is loading, just one second. Okay, here we are. Thank you very much for inviting us and having the opportunity to share our project with this distinguished audience. It is a project that is not exactly e-health, but it is related to e-health, and I hope uh, gives you some inspiration. Sometimes inspiration comes from the, sometimes inspiration comes from the boundaries, not for the core of the issues exactly. So, well, Okay, which is the challenge that we're facing in this project? It's a challenge that we're sharing with a lot of cities, and it's not as only a challenge of the city of Barcelona. I would say it's a challenge that we share with most cities in the industrial world, but also in our upcoming, upcoming countries in the world. It is, this is Ramon, could be my grandfather, and he, yes, he's the same name, and he, he lives in this house. It's a typical house of the city of Barcelona and he's 85, and the issue is that he lives alone. He lost his wife and relatives. The relatives went to live away, and he, he lives alone. It's something that is very common. And these people, the friends of the old people, always remind us that the worst thing of being, of aging, of growing older, is being alone, okay? All this is a, it's a cons they, you know, the effects of the isolation. I think you're here, there's a lot of experts from the health industry. Uh, isolation itself, it's, it, it, it has some effects on the health. Well, you have more possibilities to enter in an elderly house than if you live together. Uh, you have more possibilities to visit the doctor than if you live with other relatives. Or, for example, you have more possibilities to have depression, etc. So it has, isolation has real impact on the health conditions of, of people. This is all is a consequence of, of something good, which is the increase of life expectancy. In Barcelona, life expectancy is one of the highest in Europe. Women live up to 86 years old, and it's one of the highest in the Western world. So this is good, but the question is not living more, but how do you live this more in these, these elderly years? This is the evolution, for example, of people over 85 years old in the city of Barcelona who lives alone, okay? It's almost 18,357 women older than 85 years old that live alone in the city of Barcelona. It's a, just to give you, it's a city of 1.6 million of inhabitants. If we talk about 75, population over 75 is 58,000 people who live alone. So it's a big, big thing. It's not, as I said, something specifically of the city of Barcelona. It's something that we share with many cities. So the challenge is well, to tackle the issue, the issue of isolation, as I told, especially in the elder, elder uh, population. So, which is our vision? The vision is to strengthen and foster the proximity trust networks that we used to have in older times when we lived together with a family, with extended families, etc. And we knew our neighbors, we knew our shoppers, etc. This has been gone. And we want to rebuild these, these trust networks. We want to reduce the isolation, the sense of isolation, increase quality of life, and if it's possible, to scale up to 20,000 people in the city of Barcelona and to export it and transfer it to other cities if we succeed. So this is our targets, not only elderly. And we are so talking about, for example, disability people who live alone, people from user <coughs> social services who live alone, etc. So the idea is to a platform uh, that connects tablets and uh, smartphones and also has a, a real face-to-face -face interaction in order to foster the, um, uh, to build these trust networks. It's, as you see this logo, it's very like, uh, more or less like the logo of this 
of, of I was seeing here of, of the presentation of this event here. So this is the, the, the trust network. In the center, as Julio said, the person, the user, okay? Usually have a shadow, a care, a person who is more in charge of that person who lives alone. And then we want to build relatives, families, neighbors. But also here we can talk about professionals, social care professionals, health professionals, of course, other pharmacists, for example, who really have uh, important uh, function. So we want to strengthen these circles of trust. So, you know, everybody knows Facebook and the social networks. Everybody knows LinkedIn, these professional networks. We're talking about care networks. There's another experience in Canada that maybe you heard about. It's called TIES. It's more or less something similar. Our future implementation, we are right now in the 20, 20 with 20 users, but we want to scale up to 20,000 20, people in the city of Barcelona in three years. And if it, we succeed and we prove this is works and has a real impact reducing the sense of isolation, we want to, uh, well, export it or to do it in other cities. The journey so far, it's one question. Do elder uh, uh, shrink with technology? No, they don't. We have proof they don't fear technology if technology is adapted and if technology has usability for elder people. So we are starting to, this pilot with 20 people, the center is the user, we connect the people, how? Delivering a tablet to the person who's the center and everybody, everybody now has a smartphone. So we connect the tablet with the smartphones of the people who is around the, the person, okay? So in order to foster this trust network. So of course, this also needs some other work, like volunteer work, professionals working. A lot of issues here is not only technology. Technology is only an instrument to get our target. So, uh, so far, we have, this is the connection of the network, how, how you connect and you build your network. And very fast, we have, so far in this pilot, only four basic functionalities. Functionalities is only the idea of the functionalities is that they have to be used, okay? And to, if you use that, then you connect to the people and you reduce the sense of isolation and maybe you get more visits, etc. This is So, so far we're having telephone calls, okay? Uh, video, video telephone calls, like Skype, more or less. Uh, then we have uh, messages, voice messages, etc. cetera. Um, we have a uh, very important a calendar. Here we, we can introduce a lot of information about visit to the doctor, for example, uh, we need to take your pills, when do you have to take it, etc. Uh, family things, family issues, and then sending and, and receiving pictures, which is also that we found that elder people like a lot. Okay, uh, and in the f mobile phone, you have exactly the same, so it's very easy to connect. So, uh, which are the lessons learned now so far? We have a lot of potential with youngsters, granddaughters, grandsons. They are really easy managing new technologies. It's for them, it's 30 seconds, and you can make the day for the grandmother or grandfather that day if you send it a picture. So it's really good. Uh, elders are more uh, active than expected. Our, we had prejudice of being very, no, no, they want to do things, they want to do pictures. So this is the potential. Uh, so we have to explore the idea of the shadow, this, that person that is uh, around uh, the user. And what at least what we have learned that we have to keep it very, very simple because the design of simplicity, it really helps in order to be a real usability of, of this uh, application. No? We need more indicators of the impact, of course, and et cetera, better narrative, how to go and to convince people of the use of this. Eventually, we will have to work with the health industry, with the health system, and we can converge, of course, in this, in this idea. Um, so uh, at the end, of course, there's a lot of IT here. You need a lot of collaboration. It will be a big platform here to support these 20,000 users. And uh, another thing, uh, someone believed in this project was uh, the mayor, the former mayor of New York, Mr. Mike Bloomberg, who awarded us, the city of Barcelona, with the uh, Bloomberg Award of both ideas. And we had, we had there's a competition in Europe. Uh, at the end, we were the winners. We had been awarded with five million euros to develop this project. We have four, five more million from the city administration. We expect to have five more with sponsors. At the total is 15 more, 15 million euros to develop the project and to get this to these 20,000. Bloomberg is very interested to, if we succeed, to export it to other uh, regions of the world, other cities of the world. So thank you very much.
Okay, thank you. Thank you to the panel. We've, uh, we're on time, so we have 10 minutes for questions. I really do hope that uh, there's uh, uh, some interest out there. Um, you've got a unique chance. You've seen a really interesting um, foundation-funded uh, international program around social isolation and the link on integrated care between, I think, health and social care. Um, you've got an insurer in the room. Many of these events don't often have uh, insurance companies and the skills and knowledge that they have. So uh, really interested if uh, we can start with some questions. So if you can put your hand up so we can get a mic to you and uh, please give your name and where you're from. Thank you. Yes, my name is John Wooden. I'm from the European Patient Platform for Science and Industry. Thank you for this uh, great uh, presentation. Uh, my question is uh, two things. Uh, you said you had this interoperability solved that you can take in from others, but can you also give it forward? That's the first question. And the second question is, who got the IP rights on all the data that's actually uh, collected? Data collected from Barcelona from the last presentation? No, it's not Yeah, yes. or from the insurer? From your collecting data, yeah. and this data can have a second or a third use and a fourth use, uh, who got uh, the IP on the data because it's according to the EU rights, it is from the owner, it's from the individual who is actually the collected, the data is collected. So if you want to go for uh, science or medical uh, trials, then you want to have an informed consent. So that's the reason why I ask for the IP. And the first one is, uh, if you're going to scale it up, you always have everywhere else, uh, you said you can collect it from anywhere else, but I also uh, want to know if this all person is going to Italy, for example, can you then give it also forward? Okay. Um, uh, uh, yeah. um, um, the question is very interesting because we, uh, we had studying uh, the, the loyal problem uh, uh, two years uh, before to uh, uh, plan the project. We, we have a new company, it's uh, DKV Services, but it's not the same company that the insurance company. But we ensured uh, then uh, the e-health the e services for us. Like we, we, when we um, look for a provider to surgery, we, we look for other company, especially in, in uh, e-health um, management, to offer our client, uh, uh, after a, uh, uh, a agreement, uh, uh, the, the, the services around digital health. Uh, before the, uh, people uh, uh, give uh, the, the data to that other company, no insured company, the, the, the services company, uh, uh, that company take a consent uh, in format uh, 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 compliant around the, the uh, European and um, national uh, uh, law and rules. Um, uh, uh, we, uh, uh, we took the PHR standard from HL7, um, uh, but it's not the same in Europe because they use IPA uh, for, uh, as, as, the, as, the, uh, as the role, but we adapted that uh, uh, standard to the, the European and Spanish uh, uh, legislation. Um, uh, 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 but that standard, because we have not here in Europe a similar standard, established the, 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 uh, the process to uh, give or, or reiterate the, 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 the permits of, of the, uh, uh, from people to use your data. Uh, uh, you, can, uh, um, you can do a, per a permission only for several data and not other data. And the platform uh, uh, um, should, uh, should, be, uh, uh, should offer you the, the possibility to select the, uh, uh, at the moment the, the, the specific data you want to uh, uh, share or not. OK, so next question. No? OK, sorry. My name is Benjamin Schroer, I'm uh, from Mobile Fitness. Um, I have a question, I think it, it comes to all from the panel. 
Where, where do you see from your perspective right now that, um, that the boundaries go between who will disseminate these type of solutions, uh, both in, in Spain but also at a European level? Um, is it the private companies, like insurance companies, or is it government who will disseminate these type of solutions? And where, where do you see boundaries going from uh, prevention all the way through to disease management, basically? I'm sure we're going to have a range of views, so if we start with Rosanna at the, uh, at the end. Okay. Uh, from, the, from the Department of Health perspective, clearly every time that you deploy technology in your system, this technology needs to comply with specific regulations. So not medical, if there are medical devices, they need to be medical devices. Informable apps also, this needs to apply needs to apply with data protection and the specific regulation if you have also or maybe you know, gadgets like that you take a measure of something else. This means that uh, first of all they need to comply with this regulation but also you need to demonstrate that they are effective. You cannot implement something that then provokes more expenses to your department. So this also uh, we, we need in fact in our agency we are uh, um, building a, uh, a framework on how to make such assessment in a way that you can evaluate uh, the effect of this technology when deployed in your healthcare system. And this is basic. So, so sorry, just one second more. So the, the, you cannot expect that the, the different Department of Health or in, in Europe can, uh, um, can make advertisement of uh, uh, technologies if they are not, uh, well, if, if, since they cannot be deployed, if they, are, if, they, if, they, if they cannot be deployed in their own system. That's all. Roman? Yes, in our case, it's clearly a, a, the initiative, the leadership is by the city administration, starting from, from our mayor, who is really convinced. But we will need a lot of uh, collaboration with uh, providers as, as well as NGOs. So uh, I think in, in our case, we are thinking more like a complementary service of the all elder public services that we have, like elder people's care or tele, tele assistance, etc. Uh, nevertheless, uh, the, there's an experience in Canada which is similar. It was uh, brought by the uh, philanthropy sector, by NGOs. They started with the NGOs, it's ties. And they, they uh, did it with different NGOs, with different, different uh, cities. And at the end, a private company bought the, all this expertise, and now it's delivering it uh, for many, many countries, uh, English-speaking countries. So uh, it depends. In our case, our vision is that. Yes, um, I think the, the key question for us is uh, 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 company can uh, uh, offer any time uh, uh, a new product, a specific software for each product, and wait, we introduce that inside our uh, platform. It's necessary to advance in, in, the, in interoperability uh, from all company, and, uh, public and pri private uh, uh, initiatives. If not, the, uh, we'll, we'll translate, we will translate the problem uh, newsly to people, like when they uh, came with paper, they carry on uh, uh, everywhere. Uh, 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 and the next time we have to do a uh, uh, good, uh, um, uh, uh, real uh, 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 effort. effort to uh, do transparent the solution for, for people, uh, I, I think. So finally, my, my, my take on that would be that um, I think there's a lot of frustration amongst amongst businesses about the uptake of uh, M Health technologies and services and solutions. Um, I think it's a mixed economy, always will be. There will be private and, and public. I think those governments that start to use data and understand things quicker uh, are quickly learning that integrated care is critical and that actually this has a big part to play. Strangely, in, in England, for example, uh, social housing, uh, housing associations are probably the, the early adopters of this type of technology ahead of the NHS, and I think you might see that happening around, um, and the European Commission are talking to uh, construction companies already about effectively the technology going into the new homes production. Um, I think in the, in the private sector, I think one of the areas that people perhaps are missing are employers. So I think that those people who might 
quickest go to adopt this technology are those people who are trying to reduce simple things like sickness days and claims around stress. Um, uh, so I know m my, my firm, uh, are, 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 and there's a gentleman in the room who, who's, whose services we're using, and for that particular reason. So I think you're going to see a, a range of, of pace. Really, it's about how fast we move, I think, rather than is that the direction. So I think we had a last question in the front here. to scale up your services across Europe? Who, to what, for me? No, doc. for me? Yeah. KV. Yes. Uh, uh, our uh, headquarter is in Germany. Uh, in Munich Hans is uh, uh, our owner. Um, uh, we are working together to, uh, 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 to adapt our initiative uh, to other uh, countries. Yes, uh, really. Okay. So, thank you very much, the panel. Uh, thank you. Thank you. <coughs> well done. Thank you.